game blogs take a long time to read, so go ahead, get a drink, sit back, relax, read along, or maybe listen to this as a podcast whilst you train your horses on Star Stable or something. Hello everyone and welcome back to Star Stable. Welcome to the Star Stable blog for September. Today we're looking at horse progression, bugs and witches. It's almost like bugs and glitches. I wonder if they meant that. I haven't, I feel like I missed last month or something. Let me know if you guys do enjoy these game blog videos, but I've been pretty busy with uh, filming stuff for the beta testing and also doing some university work because my uh, two assignments were due today. So uh, let's just hope that I that I at least passed them because um yeah I did finish them whether it's possible is a different question <laughs> let's just read the game blog though let's start off with horse progression by Ashton McAllen is that how you say it Mc McAllen am I saying that with an Australian accent probably I technically say everything with an Australian accent Ashton is a game designer and Breton Hamilton, the lead systems designer. Good day, Starfam. Literally, in my mind, I was just like, good day, Starfam, good day. <laughs> this is Ashton McAllen, game designer in Breton. I'm reading it again. Today, we're discussing the next stage of our horse bonding initiative. <gasps> Wait, this is exciting. I didn't know this is what they meant by horse progression. I thought they were going to talk about, I don't know, like more horses leaving us because they're old. Star Stable is all about the magical bond between you and your horse. Earlier this year we decided to start at the beginning of horse bonding by improving the horse purchasing process and letting you select the age and gender of your horse when you first meet, which is so good. Thank you so much. Our next focus is going to be how the relationship progresses. In Star Stable, not only do players have XP and levels, but so do the horses. For us, the horse XP and levels don't just mean a horse's power level. They represent the growing strength of the relationship between rider and horse and your ability to work and move together as one. To start with, if a horse's XP and level is all about the bond between you and your horse, then caring for your horse should help build that bond. So we're adding an XP bonus for any horses you care <gasps> for by hand. Stop. Okay, this is a genius idea. Stable care will keep your all your horses happy and content, but spending time with your horse and caring for them yourself will grant them extra special bonuses. Okay, I want to know. I want to know, Star Stable. Does this mean... what? Okay, because I have almost 300 horses. That's not meant to sound like I'm not trying to brag or anything by that. I'm simply saying, what if I want to keep all of my horses fed, but I want my current horse, like... If it's technically the daily care has been done, but I still spend like my resources and care by hand, can I still get the XP that way? Because I really want to still be able to have stable care for all of my other horses. Because like I am not going to feed all 300 of my horses every single day. Maybe I'll feed a couple every day for that sweet, sweet XP. But like, you know, can I have them both maybe? What if I could buy a stable care for like certain horses? That would also be kind of annoying. But like... Yeah, see, that's just my current thought process and ideas right now. But anyways, for anyone who enjoys racing and has lots of horses to race with, we're taking the reins off races. We're we definitely have to read more about this one because I'm confused. We want you to be able to spend as much time training with your horses as you like. So we're updating the rules around competing in races. You will now be able to compete in daily races. <gasps> multiple times per day once for each of your horses. <laughs> Everything in my entire little star stable world has just shattered in a good way. <laughs> That's usually a negative connotation, but like my mind is exploding right now. <gasps> That's going to be so helpful because I have 300 horses and I've only trained like 100. And before you guys are like, oh my gosh, no, I've trained all of my horses. Do you have 100 horses though? Like, yes, I've trained a less percentage of my horses than a lot of you guys, but... But I do have a lot more and I've trained like almost a hundred of them. So I'm still proud of myself for that. But literally this is going to be life changing. <gasps> this is going to be so good. I do still feel bad for the people that don't have like more horses to train. They might be completely trained out. And I do feel really bad about that. Like really, really bad. But like for me, this is, for me, I really like core. <laughs> 
no, this this is gonna make all nighters like so good. You know, I'll just be able to keep training. Literally, I've been thinking about doing a 24 hours playing Star Stable video, but at the same time, as soon as this comes out, where's the content gonna be? I'll just spend every single hour of it training. Training takes about three hours for one horse, and if you can do the race again on a second horse, 24 divided by three. I haven't done maths in so long. I think it's like seven, seven or eight horses that I could like do all of the races for in a day. Anyways, let's just continue on. Plus, competing in those races should be more fun. I mean, faster, more speed equals more fun for lower level players as we are increasing the minimum speed for low level players and horses. <gasps> That's going to be so good because my alt accounts are so slow and annoys me every single time I play. <laughs> level 1 players with low level horses will still be slower than everyone else, but at least you'll feel like you're riding a horse instead of a fancy snail. That's adorable. <laughs> Fancy Snail is probably a name in Star Stable. I'm saving that one for later just because it's an iconic quote now. While many players love races, leveling horses is usually limited only to players who have a real dedication to racing. We want everyone to level up and build a bond with their horse, so we will reward, reward players with horse XP simply for spending time with their horse. You want to build a bond with your horse whether you're hanging out at stay some socializing, <gasps> well played with friends or just advancing the main quest. Dedicated races will also benefit as leveling will be a bit faster than it already today stop it stop look just let me let me just leave the room right now like this is already sounding so good i think i'm done like there there has there is nothing else that can be continued with this <laughs> But a number that shows the strength of the bond between you and your horse isn't very impressive if it doesn't change anything, so it also up to the rewards for each horse level. When your horse gets enough XP for a new level, we're going to give you a button to actually level that horse up and we'll show you that what new features you've unlocked for that horse. At lower levels, you unlock the faster gallop speed and lead rope to lead your horses around. Players who have purchased the lead rope with Star Queens won't need to unlock this. You've already have it for all your horses. Okay, that's epic. I was about to ask about that, but at the same time, it does kind of like, honestly, I bought the lead rope function when it first came out and that was so long ago that at this point, I've gotten my worth of Star Queens out of it. You know, I've used it so many times that I've gotten my price value and everything from it. So I'm glad that people don't have to buy it anymore. I feel like the lead rope func function is something that at least I completely forgot you had to buy. And every single time I've reminded of it, I'm like, wow, how many people know that the lead rope function exists in this game? Slash, how many people forgot that you had to buy it? Also, I'm not sure how I feel about the faster gallop speed. That means I'm gonna have to actually train my horses i hope like it'll be after one race because when i buy a horse i like to show you guys all of the gates especially obviously if it's a new breed i like to show you guys all of the gates and it'll be really annoying if i can't unlock the faster gallop to show it to you guys but anyways this is still super exciting exciting i love the you get to actually click a button i wonder if you could save that up and just keep training your horse until at one point you've like got so much xp that you can just spam click the xp like the level up button <laughs> i don't know eventually the connection between you and your horse will grow and strong enough for you to be able to call your <sighs> star stable i said you were done i said that was enough good stuff like this is obviously epic but like i wasn't expecting it i didn't come into today so i'm just gonna leave right now i can't do this anymore <laughs> you call your active horse to you moira's standing in front of my screen anywhere in your vehicle with just a whistle uh When your horse reaches max level, we'll introduce a special celebration with you and your horse to highlight the relationship you've built together. That's so adorable. Ah. My voice just keeps getting higher. I'm like out of breath. I, I don't, it's just a video game. I know, but this game is my happy place. It makes me happy. Don't you guys want me to be happy? <laughs> oh my gosh. As someone who shares like every time that they max a horse, It'll be epic to show a little celebration. That'll be adorable. In between all these special features, horses will gain speed increases every few levels, and we're going to celebrate each new level with fancy new visual effects so everyone can see the blossoming bond between you and your horse. That's gonna be so adorable. <laughs> Stop it. 
We're really excited to be working on these updates to help you feel a stronger sense of connection between you and your horse growing as you play and hopefully we'll be able to have some of these updates in your head soon. The bo horse bodied initiative continues. After our first big release with these updates, we will look at polishing and refining some of our work with horse purchasing and horse progression. It's too soon to hint at what next, what the next big project will be, but we assure you that we will focus on making horses even better in Star Stable. The design team would love to hear your thoughts and feedback. What features are you most excited for? What feature do you think we could improve your connection to your horse? I don't really know how to respond to that stuff because every single time, like, I don't mean to not add more ideas to the game, but I feel like as soon as I read what Star Stable's already doing, I get so overwhelmed that I'm like, that, that, I, how am I supposed to compete with the actual game designers? Like, I, everything leaves my mind because I'm like, this sounds epic. Oh my gosh. It sounds like, like, if you're just online, you'll earn XP. Cue the AFK players. I think, at least like my game, I have a good internet connection, but I'm pretty sure Star Stable does kick you if you've been AFK for a while. I'm not too sure, but I feel like, you know, this could be a bit of an exploit. Um, I don't know how Star Stable feels about that. Obviously, it's great for players who don't want to train or anything to still get maxed horses, but it could be considered an exploit, so I don't know if they're going to be more strict on AFK. I don't mean to go AFK all the time. I genuinely just forget that I log into the game. I get distracted super easily easily so uh, but anyways that sounds this is all just so so cool such a big improvement obviously there's always more ways that star stable can improve that ways that you personally or as a small community big community you know whatever in the game like want star stable to add and improve on but i think it's undeniable that this is already so much better than what we currently have. It's the same with the new characters. Of course, there's always more head shapes, always more body types, always more everything that Star Stable could add, but it is undeniable that what we are going to get with the first update of the characters whenever that comes out officially is already so much better than what we have currently. So I don't know if that makes sense, but um, anyways, let's move along. I, I don't know if I just want to do that. Okay, let's... One of our witches by Pablo Gad... That could be an accent thing. Game designer and Harry Jokinen. Jokinen. I'm really bad at names. The game content designer. Hello again, players. I'm Pablo Gadea. You may remember from me from. Oops, I clicked on it. Dang it. From the May Up blog post. This time, I'm joined by my fellow game designer who has been at the company since May of 2021. We've been working on multiple quests, including On the Trail of Anne, Sabine's quest in the Equestrian Festival, and recently, One of Our Witches, which is what we want to talk about. First, we want to mention that this blog post is written from the point of view of the designers, who mainly implement the content. All of these releases were a collaboration between different creatives. Narrative, sound design, art, etc. Sorry, the mention of sound design just kind of... <laughs> I'm doing a sound design course right now. Sound design is super interesting, but to say that my assignments aren't stressful is an, un is an understatement. Like, I can't- oh my gosh. Uh, many decisions go into making a project, and good communication is key for content creation. I will let Harry talk about his views on what we have worked on. For many players, the main quests are their favourite SSO content. We felt a lot of pressure when we started working with them. We want to produce the best possible content without our current constraints and improve the overall gameplay and experience in Star Stable. No, you guys are doing amazing! Literally, real people work on this game and they want it to be good. Like, honestly... I am a people pleaser and I get this like you guys are doing so good thank you for the hard work with the main quest. Chasing the crows is an excellent example of what we mean by this. It was a passion feature that I prototyped on my own. Oh, <laughs> I wanted to empower players and give them direct interaction with the world. Yes, this would not be combat, but something like that in the terms of player feel. I believe there is still a lot of untapped potential in the Soul Rider powers. I also wanted to show the Soul Riders working together through gameplay, with Alex zapping the crows alongside the player. We hear a lot of feedback that our the other characters usually leave the work for the player, riding ahead and leaving our character to deal with the problems alone. 
Oh no, but that's, it's iconic. Another gameplay highlight for me was the puzzles inside the former real library. We were humbled by the players' response to them and seeing how they enjoyed this new type of interaction. It required a joint effort between us designers, artists, writers, and audio designers to figure out how to realize the puzzle solving mechanics. I'm sorry if you could hear Moira, she is on her talking phase. <laughs> Everyone on the team did an outstanding job, especially with the library. The whole location is just magical. We can't wait to explore it even more. The writers also outdid themselves. The amount of dialogue and quality is crazy high. Now I'll hand back the mic to Pablo. While gathering feedback from previous quests, we read some negative reviews about the time it took to complete them. Negative? No, I loved them. It was so good. Bro, okay, so we asked ourselves, is there any way we can make them longer while still keeping things interesting? True, I didn't find myself getting bored though. I'm not sure if that's just because um, part of my enjoyment obviously comes from Star Stable, but the other part comes from filming a video. So I just kind of have fun with whatever I'm doing because I'm making a video and filming is fun for me. But this is like a great example of like, you can't please everyone. Like, I don't know. Some people are going to like it, some people are, and it's really difficult to find that, like, space in between. Like, for me, I might make a video that you don't like. I sometimes make videos on other horse games, and simply, if you don't like that, don't watch the video. But for a Star Stable, I feel like it's different because it's a game, so it's really hard to find that middle ground kind of thing. I feel like it's more important for a video game to find that middle ground than for me to post a video and have people be like oh i don't like that i'm not gonna watch it kind of if that i don't know i don't know what i'm saying but yeah in this story we meet a new and lovely character beatrix after meeting her previously having trapped her we ask her to lead us to her home the library narratively it made a lot of sense for her not to do this straight away with all this in mind, we propose to try a reputation block, allowing the players to play around with Beatrix and some other NPCs, and allowing us out. Sorry, <laughs> I'm fiddling with stuff and it hurts. And allowing us to chance the chance to test the functionality and reception of the mechanic. I actually really liked it because I really felt like. The current main stories, especially with the story snacks, it feels like it really satisfies me for longer. I'm not really like the main story quests aren't the main reason that I play the game, funnily enough, and that's just my player type and player choice and preference or <laughs> whatever. That's what I'm trying to say. It's just my preference. But I feel like having the reputation block and having daily quests, and it wasn't, it was only four days. It wasn't that long, at least in my opinion. And then to like have another, I think it was like another hour and a half of more questing. And now we have story snacks every single week. It just kind of feels like, so sorry for getting Moira, she is going crazy. It, it just feels like it, it satisfies my, my questing thirst. <laughs> what? You know what I mean? I don't know. That's just my preference. That's just my opinion. The fact that it was right before Fort Maria, the highest point of expectations on this quest, wasn't a coincidence either. It was meant to build up the hype. Now, I feel like that actually really helped because for some, like, for the fishing, for example, it takes weeks to complete the fishing and you don't get that much out of it except for the satisfaction of finally finishing the fishing quest. But for this one, it was only four days and you were building towards going inside one of the most beautiful locations of this game, you know, kind of thing. I feel like it was... It was good. Now, everything on the reputation blocker was very deliberate. To name a few things, the dailies give player XP. It only takes four days. If you start on a Wednesday, you continue on Saturday. And every quest is unique. I made seven variations for both quests, so you never do the same thing in the same place. Some of them might never be seen, but that's the level of detail we're going for. Which a lot of games do as well. Some other stop didn't stuff didn't work as well as I thought it would, like not including a progress bar. It's impossible to ask Beatrix about the reputation level, but that wasn't enough. Oh, it's possible? Sorry, I, I can't read. Now I know this and will improve on it, and never fear, not all quests will will feature, I cannot read, a reputation blogger. We aim to surprise and delight you, so we try to approach every quest with fresh ideas. Returning to your feedback, when there are months between releases, it's hard to keep track of the characters, plot lines, and everything going on. Several team members worked on a new way for Star Stable to address their concern without taking up too many design resources. Our solution? We decided to create six very small dialogue-oriented quests to keep the story fresh in our heads. They'll continue to be released until the next main quest is ready to go live. So we've already had two stories next, I believe. So that means the next main quest will go come out in four weeks, I think? 
kind of thing. Not only will we drop some lore. Lore, we love lore. Are you doing lore again? Also, Myra. M Myra? Moira! Okay, my mum bought her a tunnel when she was visiting me, and she is obsessed with running through it, but it's very loud when you're filming a video. This video is going to be so long, I'm so sorry. You'll also score some awesome XP. Yeah, as I've said before, story snacks, delicious, love it. I'm trying to go on the theme of snack. I'm not just weird. I'm kind of weird, probably. Now, moving on to the upcoming main quest we will release, we continue with our efforts to create exciting and engaging experiences for you. There are even greater revelations and encounters in store. The line between friend and foe becomes blurred as encounters reveal hidden complexities and motivations. No star stable. My brain is too small for complexities. But go for it, besties. <laughs> on the next main quest, the Soul Riders will try and find the way to the Valar. New and amazing discoveries are Great. Ride with us as this epic continu adventure continues to unfold. So exciting. I'm literally like so happy right now. Oh, this is a fun picture. Oh my gosh, there's so much to read and I'm already 20 minutes into this video. Okay, bugs. I'm sure we have all seen and experienced those pesky things from time to time. The truth is that bugs are a natural part of any software development process. Humans are not perfect. So errors made during design and development can lead to failures that you experience as a player. It's impossible to, like, catch everything as well, like, because every computer is different, like, all the reactions are different, and it's hard to, like, beta test, like, every single different, like, variable. I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> there are lots of steps needed to mitigate this, but by far the biggest one is testing. With every piece of content and code change and embedded tester, our dedicated quality assurance professional in the team is ready to validate the changes and ensure nothing else is broken. Some of us work with new horses, some with new story quests, and others with tech such as our game engine or internal tools but you might well wonder if we did our jobs how come you still see bugs in the game it sounds so rude like if we did our jobs but the sad part is that's literally how people talk to some of the developers online like i don't know it's just uncalled for for people to be like you should do your job like i don't know i for one just can not see myself saying something like that because I've worked in retail. I've worked in hospitality. So it's the thing where like customers don't always understand what it's like behind the scenes. And um, yeah, I'm not a game designer. I don't work in the Star Staple team. So I could just never imagine myself being able to say to someone, do your job because my gosh they're humans too and if someone told me that when I was in hospitality I I worked full-time YouTube full-time high school student I would have just burst out crying on the spot <laughs> one of the main testing principles is that you cannot test everything we tend to prior prioritize testing around the system or feature which was changed with everything with things I cannot read with things seemingly unrelated to the changes receiving less attention a wild card in all of this is called edge case is also known as corner cases. Edge cases are the extreme, the unusual, the unexpected. How someone might interact with the system or a feature in ways we did not expect. That's why there's YouTubers out there whose sole like aim is to break the game. You know, like they download a new sandbox game and they just say, okay, I'm going to overload this entire game in ways that the developers never even expected someone would play it as. And they find joy in that. <laughs> so, you know, it's kind of fun sometimes to break a game. It's not fun when it's accidental, I suppose. I don't know. Some of us, we just have special brains and we don't, we don't intend to do the thing that was unexpected, but we, we do. I'm gonna stop talking and continue reading because obviously like I, I can't function anymore. I hope that some part of that made sense. We as testers are not perfect either and so occasionally we might miss something that should have been caught but in the end we always aim to stand by the players and help deliver the best possible experience for them. So a bug is introduced and you did a better job than us and reported it. <laughs> what happens? The important thing is to report it. Guys, I am a YouTuber. That is it. I played the game. I do not know anything else than you guys do. If you have a problem, don't just write it in my comment section or DM me about it or post it on Instagram or anything. Make sure to actually contact the team about it and give them as much information as possible. 
what were the steps that you took up to leading to finding out about the bug so that they can replicate it and figure out how to fix it and how like you made the bug happen so they can reverse and everything anyways yeah the big thing is you need to tell them what happened so they can replicate it i suppose i don't know this is known as the bug life cycle which starts with a new bug one of the most important aspects of a new bug, which will determine its entire life cycle, is the steps to reproduce it. Think of it like a treasure hunt on an island and the reproduction steps are the map. The better and more accurate the map is, the quicker and easier it is to find. Keep that in mind while writing your maps for us so we can always, with your help, find your, our way out. Look, that's what I was trying to say. Time and people are valuable and fixing any bug requires both. The bugs with the most significant impact tend to be priorities first as they offer the most critical value. By communicating with us about which bugs are impacting you, you will help us accurately determine the effect of the bug and allow it to be priorities accordingly. Once a bug report has been vetted and given priority, the next step is assigning it to the right team sprint. A sprint is the period in which a team commits to doing particular tasks and the bug has a time slot to be fixed. The process of planning a sprint is, in, is a collaborative effort within the team, taking into consideration the overall direction of the game and the wishes of our stakeholders. Stakeholders are important. Your ticket has now gone- that's all I'm gonna say. Your ticket has now gone through a gauntlet of challenges to check its validity and feasibility. Now it is time for the fun part. An engineer refills their coffee, cracks a few jokes with their colleagues on the way back to their desk and finally clicks that button to set your ticket to in progress. This brings us to the reproduction steps and their importance. By reproducing the bug, they start to investigate, looking at which parts of the code are being caught and tracing the issue to the faulty piece of code. That's why being able to replicate the bug in their own game is important, you know? I don't know. It can be as simple as a small typo, in other cases it can be a fundamental fault in implementing the code, which often requires a lot more work. <laughs> Extreme cases might even involve reverting entire pieces of code to a previous state if recent changes cause the bug. Look, I would want to cry. I've worked with code and I've wanted to cry. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. The to do new implementation implementation this is a disaster to do rewrite the system support for multiple package files or write support look i yeah <laughs> when the code fix has been implemented we do a code review which adds an extra level of quality and the ticket is ready for the next stop by now the bug is nearing the end of its life cycle which is the testing stage i'm not sure how i feel about life cycle because that kind of implements the fact that the bug will happen again but hopefully yes another bug will happen but hopefully it's not in the same cycle you know it'll be a different bug so is that technically a different cycle is that a um what's the word is that a matt no what's the word um a the um <laughs> evolve that's the word evolve <laughs> If that made sense. Okay, let's just move on. The tester and the team must v validate that the fix has been solved, the issue has solved the issue described in the ticket. It may also be necessary to test that, that the changes have not introduced new problems, because that would be a bit awkward. <laughs> we will call this regression testing, a regression referring to a step back in quality. This is generally something we want to avoid at all costs. The last thing you want is a bug fix to introduce a new problem. And the sad thing is that, like, that happens. Even in video editing, you, you fix something and, you, and then you realize, oh, I broke the other thing and then it's the whole thing. Sometimes you have to delete it all and restart and do it all again. I love technology. <laughs> now that the bug is fixed, does that mean it will be fixed when I log on tomorrow? Not exactly. The fix has some way to go before it makes it its way to our live product. One way to visualize it is to think of a train schedule. Each train represents the code changes we have made since our last, since the last train. The fix waits for the next scheduled train. Once aboard, it takes a detour via our release, QA, apartment, quality assurance apartment, and then it arrives on the live servers. This oversimplifies our release process, but a more in-depth explanation is a subject for another blog. Oh wow, how we love how in-depth game design goes. Literally, I love these things because I love reading about like all the technical sides to things but honestly this stuff can also be extremely overwhelming like they've simplified it it's even more complicated than this and my little brain is already brain explode <laughs> conclusion thank gosh I've been filming for half an hour video games are complicated 
complicated software and things can and will go wrong in multiple ways. However, we always strive to deliver the best quality possible and, and ensure you experience the game the way we designed it to be. Even when things go wrong, which understandably is frustrating, we hope that you can be patient and allow us to fix our mistakes. Of course, Star Stable. Of course. The time it takes us to do so can vary considerably depending on multiple factors, some examples being how many players are affected, which platform, and the complexity of the bug itself. Due to these factors, while it may seem like bugs which have been reported many times are not being fixed, it is something that we are aware of and actively working on. Sadly, a significant effort and time investment is many times required. But we are already working on initiatives which we strongly believe will increase transparency and give more insight into how reported issues are being handled. Thank you, Star Stable. In the last year and a half, we have made many changes related to quality, adding a dedicated QA team in every team, adding more levels of testing, and investing our test automation framework. So stay tuned. We hope to share more about our quality assurance with you in the future. That was a great read. So much to learn and get inspired by. Tune if Stay tuned for more blogs. Thank you, Star Stable. Literally, there was so much information there that I almost forget about the whole this thing at the start of the video. Let me know your thoughts on the game blog of September. Literally, I'm so excited. I cannot contain myself. Good stuff is on the way. On the screen right now will be a video that YouTube has suggested to you because I have no idea what video to suggest to you today. Click on it if it doesn't treat you. Thank you guys for your continuous support. It really does mean the world to me. Have a good weekend, you guys. Bye!